I'm here with Professor Lavette Ballard, who we are very fortunate to have on our faculty at our Cumberland campus. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Thank you for inviting me. Professor Ballard, you were recently commissioned to create a piece for a very special cover of Time Magazine. Please tell us about that. The cover of Time Magazine came about kind of odd. <laughs> uh, I was literally grading papers late one night and no lie, I was checking out my email like at 1 a.m. in the morning, mind you, and I saw this email that came through from my website, and all it said was Time Magazine cover, and I'm like, whatever, this is not real, or whatever <laughs> this is. I'm thinking it's like spam of some type, and um, I read it, and it says the person who sent it, D.W. Pine, and then it goes on to say, um, uh, I, as I was doing research for a project we're working on for an upcoming magazine issue, uh, I ran across your work and I found it very spectacular. I love it, blah, blah, blah. And I would be interested in discussing with you further or seeing if you would be interested in doing a cover for an upcoming project we're working on. And I'm like, this is not real. Me not wanted to totally dismiss it, I went and emailed them back and said, oh, it sounds like something I'd be interested in. Um, here's my contact information, reach back. And I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep. I literally, after that, I couldn't finish grading. I couldn't think. I'm like, what if it's real? If it's real, this is huge. And I'm like, no, it can't be real. Somebody's playing a joke with me. And the next morning he called me at class while I was in class and he says, listen, um, we were decided last summer to do an issue on women of the year for time magazine. And your cover would be one of those covers if you decide you want to participate. And I was like, yes, of course I do. He's like, okay, well, listen, it's going to be Rosa Parks. Um, and the bus boycotters. The other women are Aurelia Browder, Mary Lou Smith, and Claudette Colvin. And they said they can be included, but we want to highlight Rosa. So there's a section in the image where you see the actual police report for the Supreme Court stating that the four women were suing the bus company for having their rights taken away from them being on the bus. And that was my way of putting all four women's names in there without having their images. It was a real challenge. <laughs> they only gave me two and a half weeks to create the work. So it was difficult, but uh, it was worth it. I love the final piece. It came out gorgeous. Uh, and it was really cool seeing it with the time logo <laughs> going mm -hmm. across it. So that was really cool. You showed a talent for art at an early age. What inspired you to pursue it as a career? Well, I always knew I would do something in the arts. Um, my mother, and like most mothers, um, and my father were pretty much like, okay, we know you have a talent for art, and we know you're really good at it, but can't you find a job where you can kind of do it and get paid a regular paycheck because they knew the risks that were out there. It is a risk. My first art teacher led me to my favorite art teacher, which was Rita Owens. Uh, I actually went to high school with Dana Owens, who is Queen Latifah. And Queen Latifah's mom was my teacher. Rita Owens was my arts magnet teacher in high school, which was like accelerated and talented and gifted art students throughout the town got to go to this summer arts program that she taught. And she was fantastic. She was a big encourager to go into a field of art. And she was the one who wrote my letters for recommendation to go into art school. So I graduated high school going, um, getting into Fashion Institute of Technology, Parsons School of Design, and um, Mason Gross um, here in New Jersey, Rutgers. And I got accepted to all three. At that time, I was big into fashion. So I ended up choosing um, FIT. 
and I went to FIT for a year, um, came home, got pregnant, <laughs> had my eldest child, uh, and I had to go into work. I couldn't go to school. I had to take, I had a kid to take care of. So um, I always did art stuff and I liked it because it allowed me to use my creative side. I think it was in, until I had gotten married and in my 30s that my husband was the one who literally said, honey, you're really good. You're really good. And I really think you can do this. If you want to go and get a degree in t um, art, go and get a degree in art. We'll figure out how to make the money later. I've got a good job. You do what you want to do. And I think that was really what helped me step out and not have to consider how am I going to do this, you know? And it was literally a leap of faith where, you know, I was like, okay, unlike most people where they're like, okay, I'm going to try to get a job, maybe doing it. Uh, he allowed me to do it and not have to worry about what I do after I get the degree. So I went to the community college because uh, it was close to home. It was inexpensive. Uh, and the best part of all was the fact that they had some really good teachers there. Uh, I thought my community college experience opened me up to, okay, I really like this school thing. I'm not bad at it. Uh, let me go on to so a four-year institution. And then I went to Rutgers. And I, honestly, I didn't figure out what I was going to do after the degree until um, the end of undergrad. So... And then I said, well, I'm almost there. I'm not quite <laughs> where I want to be technically. Uh, so I went to University of the Arts, grad school. And then while in grad school, I said, okay, I can maybe teach. And then my big break at the in the grad school was my thesis show. Uh, the thesis came about because I was struggling to find a really good substrate. And the substrate is what you're working on as an artist. I always liked wood. Wood is solid. The veins going through the wood, uh, the grain is kind of like the blood of veins of the body. The idea of using a fence was because the movie Fences with Denzel Washington based on the August Wilson play had that soliloquy in the movie where Denzel mentions about how the fence keeps some people in and keeps others out. I said, the fence is the perfect substrate for me to work on. Now it's part of my uh, aesthetic. Everyone who looks at my work, you know, it's a LeVette Valor piece because it's either on grain wood or a wood fence. So... I went back to school and I've been doing art ever since. I think your journey in education will be encouraging to our students. What would you say to a student considering Rowan College of South Jersey? I would say it's a good start to learn the fundamentals. Uh, when I teach my art appreciation class and um, my art history one, I explain to them you know, a lot of the artwork that you see nowadays in museums is made by a team of artists. Um, the big time artist gets the recognition, but there are other artists a lot of the times working for them. So even though we encourage you to be that lead artist, the great artist name, uh, there are jobs available to you. And um, a lot of those jobs are for artists that know their technical skills very well, that know the fundamentals, that um, were smart with their schooling, because that's what they're looking at. They're looking to see that they went and have an academic background, an education in the arts, uh, not just talent is going to get you there. Um, and because you need to have the smarts, a lot of the smart idea is to go where the best bang for your buck is, which mm -hmm. is with a community college. You go and you spend a lot less money. Uh, uh, you get the same quality for your freshman and sophomore year 
that you would at a major institution. And um, if it's a school like Rowan College of South Jersey, uh, you do have a lot of the same accommodations that you would in a, a larger facility you have here. So we do have the Clay College over in the Millville campus. We do have um, other campuses that have you know, full out and out theater, if you want to go into the theater or the arts, you have a gallery um, at both campuses that you can see work of the artists. So uh, there are opportunities that you don't always get with uh, the bigger institutions right off. Uh, and one thing I tell my own kids, uh, if you want to go to a junior college, that doesn't mean that you could not get into a four-year institution. It just means that you're smart. It just means that you uh, stay close to home. Uh, most students end up uh, falling to the wayside in a larger institution uh, when you really need that time to be in a smaller class to get more uh, attention that you can get with a smaller um, school. Mm -hmm. You're able to get more um, feedback on your work. And you can be lucky and get a teacher like me who's actually an internationally recognized artist. Uh, a lot of people think that people who teach in a smaller institution are just there for their night job. Uh, you know, sometimes they're there just because they want to teach and they want to pass on their knowledge. So you might get luck lucky. I mean, even Maya Angelou taught at a junior college. So, you know, you never know who you're going to get. There's a lot of uh, great teachers here. There's a lot of uh, great experiences. Uh, our school is growing quite a bit. Uh, a lot of great programs I'm hearing about, they're coming down the pipeline. Um, some programs that I'm actually involved in, I'm, uh, because of me being so well connected now, being an official emerging artist, uh, I'm going to be able to bring some big names in to my classes, my online classes, my um, and onto the campus in general, which is be really cool. And it'll be nice to bring that with the prestige of the school. So it'll be cool. I'm excited. <laughs> well, thank you, Professor Ballard. It's been a pleasure. And thank you so much for having me. It was great. <laughs>